Well, folks, I've got some bad news for you. The Earth doesn't perfectly revolve around the sun every 365 days. I mean, you already knew that. There was a leap year. It wasn't just because of the Olympics. It's there. A leap year isn't just a year that's divisible by four. However, the Gregorian calendar that we use in most Western countries also has a couple extra rules added to it. So what are these rules? So first, rule one, a leap year must be divisible by four. Okay, yep, no duh, we already learned that one. But the other rule is, if the year is a century, so it's got to have 100 in it, then it also has to be divisible by 400, otherwise it's not a leap year. Weird, hey? Okay, so we need to keep this in mind when we're making our JavaScript function here to find the leap year. Now, we could go ahead and use the JS date to accomplish this fairly quickly programmatically, but uh, in terms of speed, if we're just using pure numbers to generate this, then working out with a bit of simple math is always going to be faster than calling upon a library. So let's go ahead and do some maths magic. So what's our function? It's an easy one. So function is leap year. So it's going to be a Boolean response to it. So that's our function there. Let's put in some notes here. So our function is going to take a parameter. So it's going to be the year. And then we'll say given a year, it will turn true if leap year or false. Otherwise. Okay, so now we our parameter is going to be a number for a year. And it will be called the year. And we are returning turns a boolean or boolean, which is what I called it for many years. So boolean, true, if, leap, yeah. Cool. Okay, so let's get into our glorious formula. So let's return. So first we need to check if the year is divisible by 400. And we can do this by using the modulo. Here, and that's just a little percentage sign and then we can put in our 400 here if the year is a modulo of 400 it's going to return zero it's going to have nothing left over so we can put an equal sign here and have that equal to zero or the year is divisible by four so it means uh, if you can divide it by four and it equals zero and also the year is not divisible by 100 so if we can divide the year by 100 and not get zero then we've got a leap year and we should put them in some braces here because this is one area so if the year is divisible by 400 then we're going to return the result as true otherwise if the year is divisible by 4 and not divisible by 100 then we're also going to return it true otherwise we're going to return false so let's give that a little test now so let's create an array called year test array and that's going to be equal to let's put in 2000 so we know that one from the olympics in sydney or shidoni and then 2001 is not going to be a leap year but what about 2100 so that shouldn't be a leap year either because it's not divisible by 400 and then 2200 shouldn't be either uh, what about 2400? That should be, right? And let's do the current year to 2024. That should be divisible. But next year shouldn't. So 2002, oh, 2025 shouldn't. And then finally, let's do 1900 because this confused the early day developers of the very first set of spreadsheets. So we'll see what that results in. Okay, so... Let's quickly iterate over these and return an array of objects of the year and whether it is a leap year or not. So let's go const result is equal to, and then we'll say year test array map our year as a parameter equals a little cheeky arrow function. And then we'll return just our year and a uh, is leap year. And that's going to be equal to is leap year. Yeah. Cool. And then console. Let's make a console table. Because so that looks prettier. Table. Result. Cool. We've got plenty of test data here in here to check it all. So hit uh, F5 to return. And, um, oh, I should bring that up. 
debug console. Yeah, look at that. Okay. So there's our results. So we've got 2000. Yes, leap year. 2001. No. 2100. No. 2200. No. Uh, 2400. Yes, it's a leap year. This year, 2024, leap year. Next year, nah. -uh. What about 1900? Nope, not a leap year. Maybe those early spreadsheet developers should have done this formula first, eh? Okay, so that's all you need to do to check for a leap year in JavaScript. Up next, we are going to compare two date ranges to see what days overlap and record those days, all in JavaScript. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, subscribe. Until next time.